In this lesson, we're going to talk about online backup. This can also be referred to as off-site or cloud backup. Basically, what any of these terms mean is that you have a backup copy of all the files on your computer located somewhere other than your desk at home or an external hard drive you always have with your Mac. Having a reliable online backup system is really the ultimate insurance policy for your data. Backing up locally using something like Time Machine on your Mac is good and I still highly recommend doing a Time Machine backup along with an online backup for your most important data. But a local Time Machine backup is actually fairly vulnerable. If your Mac is stolen or somehow destroyed, there's a good chance your Time Machine backup drive will be too. That's when an online backup service like Backblaze can really save the day. More and more online backup services are becoming available, but it's hard to find one that will back up a lot of data. I mean more than a few gigabytes, or even a few hundred gigabytes. These days, with 15 to 20 megapixel cameras and 1080p videos, ending up with hundreds of gigabytes of data doesn't take all that long. So the great thing about Backblaze is there's unlimited backup. If you have 3 terabytes of data on your Mac, Backblaze will back all that up for the same price as if you had only 3 gigabytes of data. The next best thing about Backblaze is the price. Their plans are about $50 per year per computer for unlimited backup. So let's get started and see how to set up Backblaze on a Mac. Since I already have Backblaze running here on my iMac, I'm going to use screen sharing to show you the setup process on my MacBook. So here's my MacBook screen, and I've already downloaded the Backblaze installer. Here's the DMG file in my downloads folder. Notice in the install window that there's also an uninstaller here. So if you decide not to keep Backblaze after starting a trial, you can remove it completely by reopening the installer file and double clicking on this uninstall icon. I'll choose the installer though and create a new account. If you already have an account with Backblaze and this is the second computer you're going to back up, just sign in to your account here. Next, Backblaze analyzes the drive, looking to see how much data and how many files will need to be backed up. Once that's complete, click Finish and Close and Backblaze goes to work. Up here in my menu bar, there is now a Backblaze icon. Click on it and I can do a few things like pause the backup or restore lost files. Click Backblaze Preferences to open the Backblaze Preference pane, which is now installed in the other section of your Mac System Preferences. In this window I get a snapshot of Backblaze's current status on my Mac. Right now my initial backup for this Mac is in progress. No files have started backing up yet because the file lists are being sent to the Backblaze servers. This should change in a minute or two. And down here it says how long is left in my trial. Over to the right is an important link. Click on how long will my first backup take and Backblaze will estimate how many days until your first backup is complete. This number will depend on how much data you have to back up and your internet connection speed. My first backup took about a month, so don't be alarmed if it takes a long time. That's normal for the initial backup. So for this Mac, the estimate is only 5 days because I don't have a lot of data on this Mac. If you have a lot of data and a slow connection speed, Backblaze will actually recommend you don't use their service because it will just take too long to do the backups. 
Now here in the lower left of the window, the number of files to back up and the files remaining are listed. If you want, you can sit here and watch each file from your Mac move to the Backblaze servers. Next, I'm going to switch to the Backblaze preferences on my iMac so we can go through some of Backblaze's settings with a computer that's already been backed up with Backblaze for a couple of months now. So here in the Backblaze preference panel on my iMac, you can see that it's backed up as of today and that over 320,000 files have been selected for backup with none remaining to be backed up. Now let's click on the settings button here. There are six tabs in here that will let me tweak how and when Backblaze will back up my data. The first one just contains some general settings. The online name will be what's displayed here if I want to restore some files from Backblaze to this computer or elsewhere. The temporary data drive is the hard drive used by Backblaze to organize files that it's backing up. It's probably best to leave this set as your Mac's main hard drive. At the bottom of this window, I can select what external drives I want to back up. Right now I have an external drive called Photos plus Mac U selected and my Time Machine backup drive is unselected. So Backblaze will back up the Macintosh HD and the Photos plus Mac U external drive. One catch with backing up external drives with Backblaze is that they need to be plugged into your Mac more often than not to be backed up by Backblaze. If I were to unplug the Photos plus Mac U drive, after 30 days the data from that drive will be removed from the Backblaze servers. So in this section, select drives that will be plugged into your Mac regularly. And obviously there's no need to back up a Time Machine backup drive. Now let's go over to the Performance tab. Here you can throttle how fast Backblaze backs up. Usually automatic is a good choice, but if you're streaming video or playing an online game, using the manual throttle to save some bandwidth can help. If you're using a MacBook, I would uncheck Backup when on battery power. Transferring all this data can drain your battery faster than normal. At the bottom here is a speedometer graphic that lets me know how fast my backups are transferring. Usually anything in the blue area is okay, half a megabit per second or better. In the schedule pane, you can set exactly when data will be backed up. In most cases, continuously will be the best option. But if you like, you can set it to back up once a day at a specific time. Or back up manually by choosing only when I click Back Up Now. With this selected, I'll have to go to the Backblaze menu and click Back Up Now to begin a backup. Next is the Exclusions pane. You'll automatically see a bunch of system folders in here that Backblaze won't back up. Backblaze doesn't back up your system files or your applications. This is because those can usually be re-downloaded from the Mac App Store or the developer's website. I've added a couple of my own folders here at the bottom. Both my iTunes TV shows and movies. These are things that can also be re-downloaded from iTunes if they were to be lost. I can add another folder to the exclusion list by clicking the plus button here. I'll select the folder on my desktop called Mockups. So now all the data in that folder will not be backed up by Backblaze. If you have any huge files like long full HD videos, or maybe some big archive files. You may need to adjust this menu to 9,000, 25,000 megabytes, or no limit. So Backblaze will back up even these extra large files. Next, in the security pane, Backblaze describes that all your data is encrypted before it's sent to the Backblaze servers. So as long as you have a strong password on your Backblaze account and the login credentials, your data is very safe. But if you want to take an extra step to secure your data, 
You can do that by creating a private encryption key here. Once this is set, you must remember it. If you forget this key, your backed up data will be unrecoverable. Finally, we have the Reports tab. This shows me how much of certain types of files are backed up. Movie files are taking up most of the space on this backup. Click the menu here to view any items scheduled to be backed up, or to view a detailed log of the backup process. Click OK and the changes I've made to any of these settings will be saved. Now let's take a look at how to recover files with Backblaze. Under the Backblaze menu, just select Restore Files. Or if you're on a new or different computer, go to Backblaze.com and click the Sign In to Restore button here. I'll then need to sign in to my Backblaze account. From this page, I can pick and choose individual files and folders to recover or restore all my data, either by a free download or by purchasing a recovery flash drive or hard drive. More than likely, you can just choose the download option. Then select what files to recover. In these menus, I can set a date range of what backed up files to display. If I know there's a file on my desktop five days ago, I can set that here. Then check the box next to the file or folder I want to recover and click continue with restore. Backblaze prepares the file and sends me an email when it's ready. Click the link in the email and I'm taken to the My Restores page. Click the download link and the file is recovered. You can also skip checking your email and just go to the My Restores link here on your Backblaze account page. Once the restore is complete, click the Delete button here to remove it from your My Restores list. So with Backblaze, you can restore entire drives by clicking their checkboxes here, or individual files or folders by drilling down to them and checking only the items you need. So that's a look at how Backblaze Online Backup works. It's a great and very affordable option for anyone that has a broadband internet connection and doesn't already have a reliable off-site or online backup solution. To start a free trial of Backblaze, go to www.themacu.com backup. Thanks for watching.